and welcome to Web Crawlers. This is our mailbag episode where we play your voicemails and read your reviews. I'm Ali Siegel. I'm Melissa Stetton. I heard a rumor that we have some reviews. You are correct. <laughs> this is from CVK Ginger 2. I can honestly listen to you girls read a phone book. You're Ooh. funny and I absolutely love listening to you while I'm at work. Thank you for making my shifts go by faster. Sorry for coming late to the game. I adore you girls. La la la. Honk honk. Oh, thank you. Thank you. This is from Haley McCune. Good job. My boyfriend said I have to rate this podcast five stars because it's great. <laughs> thank you, boyfriend. Yeah, it's uh, the one man we can trust. The one man. Uh, this is from Karen Lynn, 1998. Amazing and chill. Love these girlies. Their web crawling content is the bee's knees. They're Ooh. funny and informative without taking things too seriously. It's the best balance. The crawling Aww. podcast community is super cute with the mailbag episodes. Much love from Florida. We do have the best community ever. Crawling community. Should we get into these voicemails? Sure should. Darn tootin'. Oh, I'm proud of myself. I remember the number without having to look it up. That's wow. funny. I'm Jennifer, and I have to call with a secret. Ooh. Um, okay. Long story short, um, my, husband and I, my husband and I are looking for a third. Oh. Ooh. And he wanted to send her like a a tame, cute little question. So he he said, "I'm going to send her." Um, so he texted, um, "Who's better at kissing, men or women?" Oh. A stupid little question. But he sent that question to his mother. <gasps> um, and his mother did read the text. No. <laughs> oh my god. We laughed and laughed and couldn't stop laughing. It was so crazy and. That's so funny. He asked me, what should I do? And I said, lie. <laughs> yeah. So he he told a lie. He said that he was joking around with a friend or whatever. But that was funny. It was so embarrassing. And That's uh, so uh, funny. I just thought people should know. It was crazy. That's Anyways, really funny. <laughs> Bye-bye. Hong Kong. That's excellently texting your mom. What a nightmare. Who's better at kissing men or women? That's like, I've not, I thank God I've never accidentally like sexed. Oh, <laughs> no, I haven't. Your parents? Yeah. I was one no. time, one time I, I, it wasn't a sex, thank God, but it was a picture of me in long johns. And, <laughs> and it said like, I got lingerie for our trip. And I meant to, oh. as a joke, and I, I meant to send, right. send it, uh, I meant to send it to my boyfriend, but I sent it to like a, a friend of mine instead. Um, but it oh, wasn't no. a big deal, thankfully, you know, but. Oh, no. Yeah. Hello, it's Jennifer again with a really embarrassing secret from earlier. It's like, we found a third. I'm back with a book recommendation. A book oh. recommendation? Um, if you're into true crime, I'm, I just started reading this book called. The Curse of the Marquis de Sade by oh. Joel Walker. Um, it's about Marquis de Sade. Obviously, it's more, it's, uh, he was like what sadism was named after, but he was so much more than like, you know, the author of that scandalous book. Like, he actually was like a menace to society, <laughs> apparently. I just oh. heard the book, so I don't know all the details, but that guy, Marquis de Sade, bad guy. So if anybody else wants to check that out, if you're into weird people who live life doing crime and then die doing crime, their whole life was crime. Anyway, yeah, if you're into that, um, I recommend it. The Curse of Marquis de Sade. Enjoy. Uh, woo uh, Marquis de Sade wrote uh, 120 Days of Sodom, that whole thing. Oh. I don't know much about the guy other than that book and that movie yeah oh a lot of sex crimes Ooh. french noblemen the french mm, the french the french don't trust the french yeah except their fries oh did we miss the McDo oh. free mcdonald's friday when was that fuck there was a day where mcdonald's was giving free fries free fries friday oh no thursday july 13th god damn it Fuck. Fucking damn it. God damn Fuck. it. <laughs> well. Well. Uh, <sighs> what do you do? Okay. <laughs> well, fuck. <laughs> well, fuck. Next message. 
Hey, web crawlers. Uh, this is Emily. I am the girl who was using the um, shampoo as lotion. <laughs> um, I just listened to the latest uh, episode on the submersible when you guys were talking about oh, yes. um, if you were wondering whether or not James Cameron was problematic. Um, and I cracked my knuckles and I opened Ooh. Google and I have several examples of why he is. Oh, <laughs> oh no. no. This is Google. Um, oh. But the first thing is that he was like apparently like a tyrant on the set of Titanic. Um, I think he violated actors' rights and was, like, making them work super long hours in the water on set where some of them got hypothermia. Um, He was super um, mean to Kate Winslet. He supposedly called her Kate Ways a lot. Um, And he hired her a personal trainer and, like, made her watch what she ate and watch her portions because he said she was, like, too fat. Um, oh, no, for, no. you know, the set or being in her nude scene. Um, and she said that um, she refused to work with him for a really long time. Um, and she's quoted those saying, like, he had a temper, like, you wouldn't believe. <laughs> so apparently he was very mean to people. And that um, in order for her to be in Avatar 2, he had to pay her a lot of money. <laughs> I do remember hearing uh, He also that. said that Wonder Woman, like the superhero Wonder Woman, cannot be a sexist icon because she wears a form-fitting costume. So I guess you can't be a powerful woman and to be sexy at the same time. Um, And then he's been under attack by multiple, like, indigenous groups, like, multiple, multiple across the world, just saying that um, he's appropriating culture in a harmful way. Um, He has a savior complex and telling the story. He's using blue face, quote unquote, with Avatar, um, just because he's trying to, like, tell colonialism in a very insensitive way <laughs> uh, through science fiction. Sure, sure, and sure. there's about a million other examples. Oh, no. but he's not a great guy. <laughs> and while it's really cool that he's like an engineer and an inventor and can make great movies, like he mm-hmm. doesn't quite treat women well. He says he likes women who aren't needy, quote unquote. And I think all that means is he likes women that let him do whatever he whatever wants, he wants yeah. and <laughs> go on his little deep sea adventures and gives them no time or love and attention, just an assumption based on what I know from men. Um, so yeah, that's just a couple. I would encourage you guys to Google why is James Cameron shitty? Um, oh, <laughs> no. don't give him a ton of money for his movies. All right. Love you. La la bye. Uh, yikes. Wow. <laughs> well, how dare We've you say done it again. anything critical about Kate Winslet? Yeah, that that's lady crazy. Is crazy. That, that that's woman, fucked. That woman is a treasure. Yeah, I cannot believe that. That's fucked. Well, fuck James Cameron. Fuck James Cameron. Damn. Damn. Take it back. Take it back. <laughs> okay, next. We hate James message. Cameron. We hate him. Hello, this is a message from Hi. Hey. It's Becky from England. Hello. Hello, Hello. 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 And also Maria, because I'm calling the old number. Um, <laughs> so thank you for passing this on, Maria. I really hope you're well. She's good. Um, very interested to see what you've been up to when we all finally found out. Um, yeah, I can't remember any number, guys. Sorry. I'm sure I will eventually. <laughs> but for now, we get the original yeah. number will stay in my head rope free. I'm sure forever. Um, so I was just listening to your um, Elba Gibson and Grandpa's Severed Finger. And a girl called in said she was due a baby in October. Congratulations. Oh. And it reminded me of a story that my dad told me, which I thought was quite funny. So, and I never met him, but my dad's granddad told my dad when he was younger that he had a soldier's severed finger in a box. I'm sure yeah. you all know where this is going. Seven I'm sure you've all heard of box. this trick. Um, so my dad used to constantly nag him every time he saw him, oh, let me see the finger, let me see the finger. He's like, no, 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 no. But every now and then, all right, I'll show you the finger. So go in another room, get this box out, keep it, you know, quite far away from my dad. Very slowly open the lid and there'd be a finger there. Ooh. Perfectly, you know, fan in cotton wool with bits of blood around it. Mm. You can show my dad it for maybe five, ten seconds. That's it. Puts the back on, puts it away. And my dad always thought that his granddad had a soldier's severed finger in a box. 
And he said it wasn't until he was in his 30s when his granddad had been long gone that he was just having a drink one night and just realised that it was obviously just a hole in the bottom of the box. He put his his granddad's dick in a box. I got a dick in a box. (laughs) Which is just brilliant. And Mm. honestly, I'm quite certain that my dad is going to do the same thing for my kids. (laughs) Because he always says that. That really sort of stuck with him and made him think of the sort of granddad that he wants to be. He's already a granddad to my sister's kids. Um, But they're very little. Great for Prince. So yeah, I thought that was dead funny and that just reminded me of that. And... And I just thought it was funny that he never told him and like just took my dad absolutely years and years to just realise what it actually was. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Nothing much interesting for me other than it was my birthday yesterday. <gasps> happy birthday! Um, he probably said happy birthday yesterday, so thank you. <laughs> um, I was 32, so I'm now... Oh, I think there's a part two... It's my dick in a box. box. Hi, this is my web girl, and it's Becky. And um, I'll just carry on. So, yeah, it was my birthday yesterday. I'm now 32. 32? 32. Um, 32. I am 19 Young. weeks pregnant as of today. Oh, my God. Next congrats. Week we get our second scan. Quite exciting. Um, and only in the last couple of days have I started to feel the baby move, which oh, is wow. really bizarre. Like, really nice. But also kind of gross. <laughs> That's so fun. Like, it's gross. Oh, yeah. Like, it's lovely. I'm like, oh, there's baby. I can't even real. imagine. They're real. And then I'm like, it's ew. Weird. There's a person in me and I can feel it moving. Yeah, it's creepy. Uh, gross. Yeah. So, yeah, mixed feelings. But still pretty lovely. And then that's happened the last couple of days. Um, and my fiancé, Chris, actually put his hands on my belly yesterday on my birthday and, and felt... A bit of tapping, so that was like quite a nice birthday present uh, for me and him. That's sweet. So yeah, baby, so the size of a large mango. Large mango. Um, I'm size. really excited to see it. Mango. A large mango. Uh, large mango. Yeah, not not as much, but did have a birthday puke. Before I went out for the day. So a birthday puke? Birthday puke. But we're not going to get over it. Do you know what I mean? Us women are strong as hell. And, right. and we can deal with it. Yes. And I'm dealing with it because I'm a strong, independent woman. <laughs> and that's why I love this podcast as well because strong, independent women are running it and producing it. And we have brilliant, strong, independent women calling in. As well yes. As lovely guys, of course. Like Woo! Me. And so that's it. Yeah, much love to you all. Oh, I'm loving the new Boom Boom News. Absolutely loving it. Aww. Loving it. Love it. Love it. Love you all. Bye. La la la. Loving it. Was that so Nineties? weird for you when you started feeling the baby move? Yes, because it feels like, you know, when you get Gas. really butterfly butterflies in your stomach? Yeah. Where you're like, you feel really nervous? Yeah. It feels like that. Oh, how weird. It's weird because like it kicks from the inside. It feels like. I can't even imagine. It's hard to explain, I guess. Yeah, like butterflies. Or, like you just feel little teeny kicks. And it happens like the same time every day. Because really? The baby has sleep patterns already. That's crazy. Mostly when I would lay down. Because when you're oh. still is when the baby is mostly awake. Because if you're walking around. Yeah, like you rock the baby to sleep. It likes motion, but if oh. you lay down, you're really still. I would find like before, like at nighttime, I would like see her little feet pop out. Oh my god, that's crazy! It's fucking crazy. Okay, next message. Hi, Becky again. Sorry, um, I was just carrying on listening to the Seven Finger episode, and I'm just fun going so hard right now because I just got. A shout out from Carson City, Britney bitch. Oh, and yeah. she said, Becky from England, congratulations. And I'm just like, oh my God, fangirl <laughs> moment. Can't believe I got a shout out from her. Absolutely lovely. Thank you so much. That's all. Bye. <laughs> That's Carson cute. City, Britney bitch. Hey guys. This is for the web crawlers. Um, Hi. I was just listening to a recent mailbag where uh, someone had called in about the conversation you had with the 
men's restroom versus the women's restrooms oh. and how oh. women's are a little more, you know, women there are helpful and, you know, it's a little mm-hmm. more friendly. Um, I actually am transgender, so I went from female to male. Um, oh. And so I have oh, been in both. a good perspective. Oh. And yeah. And I think the biggest... I, I, I can't tell you enough how much I miss women's restrooms. First of all, the cleanliness. Um, yeah, that's oh, the, interesting. It's much, much different. Uh, even the dirtiest women's restroom that I've been in, uh, I would much prefer that than wow. what I've seen in men's. And, I, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to say, you know, men's ones are bad. It's what? obviously they're, you know... <laughs> depends where you're going but overall i think the general cleanliness of women is much much nicer yeah and as far as you know the topic of kind of this social weird social aspect of it i gotta agree with you guys you know you go into a women's restroom and you know you know i'm well, i'm 37 now and i started my transition about six years ago Congrats. So I spent, you know, the majority of my life using women's restrooms. And there is this kind of weird, like, you know, friendliness. And you mm-hmm. need something, hey, I need a tampon or I need this. Or, you know, you yeah. can ask. It's a very, you know, uh, friendly, comfortable atmosphere for the most part. Or, mm-hmm. you know, you're at a bar and, you know, like, hey, I don't know you, but I'm going to vent to you about this. Or, hey, how does the back of my hair look? You know, things like that. Yeah. And, yeah, there's none of that going in men's restrooms. I, huh. It's a shame. I think maybe because I was it so used shame. to women's going into men's for a while, it took some real getting used to. I bet. And I actually, you know, there's websites out there for transgender men and women. Um and I've looked at that. People just kind of give advice. And it's very nerve-wracking when you're starting. You know, when I started being able to pass as a cis man um, and having to start using a men's restroom, it is, you're very, it's very nerve-wracking. I can imagine. Uh, wondering, that. you know, am I going to, are they going to know? Oh, my God, are they going to look at me? Yeah. Are they gonna, am I going to get my ass kicked? Like, what's going to happen? So I'm, I think there should be a part to you. Yeah, that must be crazy going from f- women's restrooms yeah, to males. Yeah, it must male. be terrifying, especially in this climate where yeah. everyone things so crazy. For the web crawlers, part two to my men's restroom rant. <laughs> my first part two message. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, anyways, I'm researching, you know, how to kind of blend in with a crowd in the uh, men's room as a mm-hmm. trans person. And I remember one of the things I read was just... Walk in, don't make eye contact, just go into your business yeah. and get out. Uh-huh. And so that's literally what I started doing. I walk in, I look at the floor, and I still need to use a stall. I don't need parts, I can't use the urinal. So I make a beeline to the stall, same thing on the way out, look at the floor, straight to the sink, wash my hands, and just leave. That's so crazy. And, yeah. you know, at first it was like, oh, geez, like, is it that bad or what? And, and, I kind of, you know, I'm a very, when I walk, when I go to the store, when I go places and I make eye contact with someone, I just yeah. kind of automatically smile or say hello yeah. or something. It's just instinct for me, like passing by someone in the grocery store, oh, hi, you know. And I remember I did that a couple times in the men's room and the looks I got oh. was like, you know, they just glared at me like, what the fuck are you looking at me, smiling at me for? Oh my you know? God. So I learned to not do that very quickly. I And again, I don't know if that is, I think like the last guy who called it like a weird homophobic thing or what, like, yeah. I, you know, I'm not obviously not smiling at them at the, as they're at the urinal or anything weird right, like that. Right, of course. But just as I'm like walking in or out of the restroom door, like in passing, just a couple of times as I made eye contact, contact with someone, I kind of threw a little smile and just, they just glared at me. Like that's I just what, insulted their mother what, or something. And I was like, oops, sorry, sorry, I was too friendly. You know, I'm not flirting with you or anything, don't worry. Right. So, yeah, I don't know what that is. If that's just uh, a weird thing, because maybe it is kind of an intimate thing. Everyone, guys in there are grabbing their junk out and peeing, yeah. and maybe they don't 
want anyone, you know, contact, <laughs> social contact, whatever. I don't get it. Or if it's a weird homophobic thing, who knows? But yeah, I knocked that off very quickly. So, you know, but also, I guess while we're on the topic with the whole trans thing, and I, you know, I don't mean to offend any guys out there. I'm not saying all guys are assholes in the bathrooms or anything like that, but that's just been my experience. Oh, but oh, the restrooms. Okay, that's one more thing. I have, I've learned some things I don't want to know in the restrooms, like oh. how many guys don't wash their hands. Oh. And I really bring this up to my fiance all the time. I'll go to a restroom, store, restaurant, wherever. Oh, no. Like I said, I'm in the stall, you know, and I'll hear a guy walk up to the urinal outside the stall. There's one more part. Oh, oh I had a man. Feeling. Yeah. Gotta wash your hands. Yeah. Oh, my crawler, uh, sorry. Hands, Part three of my adventures as a trans guy in the men's room. <laughs> so, yeah, you have no idea how many, the percentage of men don't wash their hands after going to the bathroom. Oh. It's been a disgusting discovery uh, since my time. <laughs> and like I said, I, I told my fiance every time, I'm like, ah, I'll just get in there. And, you know, I just, guy went straight from the urinal, straight back out into the restaurant to go eat or whatever. That's and crazy. it's like, guys, wash your hands, please. Like, I don't even want to wa- shake anyone's hand anymore because now I know what goes uh, on. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah don't. But, like, yeah, it's a little scary. And, um, I, as far as the behavior, I don't, I don't know, again, if that's a homophobic thing, but I work, I work in restaurants and, I still work in a kitchen, um, and it's like, if, if that's the case, you know, there's no place, I don't know what their men's obsessions with penises are, because it seems like restaurants are the worst place also, because oh. like, I've had, there's so many, they're constantly making penises out of everything, like, I walk in in the morning, there's like a cucumber with tomatoes <laughs> on my prep table in the shape of a penis, Oh my God, and really? then, you know... The chef comes and he's like, oh, did you see what I left for you there? <laughs> and it's like, for guys who seem so homophobic at some time, you know, I yeah. sure are obsessed with penises in the kitchen an awful lot. Yeah, <laughs> That's completely sure, yeah. unrelated, but I just thought, you know, since cool. I'm on here talking to the trans guy, what are guys' obsessions with penises? I don't get it. I'm right. repulsed by them. I'm into chicks, so I don't want to see them. <laughs> That's my thing. Anyways, I'm done ranting. That's just been my experience in the restrooms. Thanks. Wow. Well, that made me think of something else is maybe men don't make eye contact in bathrooms because they're insecure about penis size and they don't want to like compare penises or like look at anyone else's penis or like things about things like that. Yeah, that could be. That's. That makes sense. Yeah, They're in- insecure about. Yeah, that could be a thing. Yeah, that's crazy. For yeah, guys are like, for guys who love joking about dicks, I feel like a yeah. lot of men do. Oh yeah, and weird, weird about bathrooms. <laughs> yeah, <ugh>. so <laughs> strange. Next message. Hi, this is for the web crawler. Oh. Just a quick little add on <laughs> to my little bathroom rant. I want to apologize to any guys. I don't want to offend anyone. You know, it's no. just been my experience. I'm sure there's, you know, not all guys in the restrooms are jerks. And, uh, you know, just don't want to offend anybody. All right. Thank you. <laughs> That's so sweet. Thank you for your perspective. Yes. On restrooms. That's interesting. Having to go from like smiling women. Yeah. Hey, how you doing? To like going to a men's room and just staring at the That's floor. Like, like the ultimate terrified. insight. Yeah. That sucks. Yeah, that does suck. That stinks. Hi, web crawlers. This is Carly. Um, thank you for putting out that uh, message about me trying to find and keep friends. Um, oh. I still haven't done that. <laughs> but, um, I'm feeling really good today. I oh, had to good. abruptly move apartments and oh, yeah. I was like $500 in debt oh. and uh, things haven't been going great. I've had like three mental breakdowns in like the past week and a half. And I haven't been able to take my medication because mm-hmm. it's locked in my car. But that's a whole different story. 
Anyway, what I wanted to call and say was I just read an article about Leslie Van Houten, which I don't know if you know who that is, but she was one of the Manson girls. Oh, she, yeah, she just got released uh, or whatever, yeah. Did the LaBianca and Sharon Tate murders yes. with Charles Manson. And she's been locked up for like 50 something years now. Yeah. And has been denied parole every single time. But they might actually be releasing her pretty soon. She got released. So I just thought maybe you guys could look into that or talk about that. Um, Which kind of reminds me, like, I never actually put any, like, creepy stories or anything on here. I guess this isn't really creepy. This is just me being a weirdo. But um, uh, if you want, I could tell you about the time that I wrote to a serial killer (gasps) and they wrote me back. And I still have their letter. Absolutely. And, yeah, uh, we need to hear about yeah. that stat. Uh, so that's so yeah. cool. Also, I just made taco meat and stuff. <laughs> and it all spilled on the floor. And one of them went into this very open grated uh, air vent in my floor that <laughs> leads to the heater. Why did, I, ugh, why did I say that like that? That leads to the heater and... <sighs> When winter comes, my whole apartment will smell like taco meat. Oh, no. So that's not great. That's not too um, bad, actually. Yeah, you have to get that Taco Bell season. Oh, which leads me to something else. The other night, I was making food in the oven, and I started talking dirty with this guy, and then he started talking dirty back, and it was really good. Um and I had to be like, I'm so horny and I want to play, but I literally just put fish sticks in the oven. And it was so embarrassing. Anyway, bye. <laughs> that was like the ultimate web crawler's message. Just That's a smorgasbord so of information. <laughs> I Kevin made friends. I had to move my apartment. My medication was locked, locked in, my, in car. my car. I got taco meat in, in the, the grate. Yeah. I was having phone sex and then I'd put my fish sticks in the <laughs> Oh wow. Oh my god, that's insane. I got that. I think that's all. I think that's all I got for today. That's all, folks. Well, please continue to call. That's actually great because I'm so that's hungry and so tired. Great message to end on. That's a, that's actually the perfect <laughs> message to end on. Um you make some fish sticks? Yeah, I need to make some fish sticks. Um, Continue to call us at our new number. But if you call us at our old number, that's okay. We will get it. But try try to learn the new one. Uh, Insert jingle here. 626-63-42069. Nice. I am Allie Siegel. I am Melissa Stetton. And that's all, folks. Bye. Bye. Powered by ACAST.